Hello and welcome to episode number 311, I believe, of the TW Trader Way Challenge run. This is going to be Smackdown for week 4 of November, and this is the go-home show, the final show in general, um, for before Survivor Series on Saturday. And we're going to have Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins face-to-face, we're going to have Gunter versus AJ Styles... Um, the four-way to determine the next challenger for the U.S. champion, women's tag team match, and a whole lot more. Without any more further ado, let's jump straight into this go-home show. We open up with wrestling, you know. We've got a lot of big matches to get through tonight, so opening up with a wrestling match seemed like the cool. Um, Mr. AJ and Gunter, I feel like these two respect each of the rest, the, the art of wrestling enough where there'd be no outside interference. It's just these two going at it. And it goes 1937, open up with an absolute banger, and yeah, Gunter wins. He beats AJ Styles in 1937 with the Golden Bomb. Um, 83 for AJ, 95 for Gunter, and 85 for the match, which is, I guess, fine. But yes, the final shot before um, Survivor Series is fired by the Regal Coalition against the OC. We then cut to Pierce's office. When Heyman walks, he goes, Good evening, Mr. Pierce. He goes, Yes, Paul, just what I wanted to see. And Heyman goes, So what is it? You know, we've got this big face-to-face in the main event tonight. The tribal chief, Roman Reigns, and Seth freaking Rollins, and their teams for war games this Saturday night. And Pierce goes, That's exactly what I talked to you about, Paul. Listen, this is ten years of the shield, you know? This is War Games. This is Survivor Series, one of the biggest pay-per-views on the WWE calendar. I don't want anything to be done that puts that match in jeopardy. So, please, can you try not cause too much problems out there in that main event tonight? Henry goes, oh, why are you talking to me? You should be talking, you should be asking those three rapscallions at Buster Gates, that Nebo Barnes... That Rufus Hamilton. You should be asking that tone coat, Solo Sokoa. You should be asking Seth freaking Rollins. Because ah, the tribal chief and his cousins, the Usos and Jacob Fatu, they, Mr. Pierce, have no intention of getting things physical in that main event tonight. Because I don't know if you've noticed, they're outnumbered, they're outmanned, they're outgunned. And the tribal chief, he's not dumb. The tribal chief is a genius. He knows if the numbers are against him, especially against such unproven commodities as those three formerly masked individuals. He's not going to try and start a fight. So, you should be telling this to Seth Rollins. But trust me, Mr. Pierce, if things do get physical, the tribal chief will have no problem putting it to an end tonight. We then cut to, like, the Hurt Business training room. It's like, it's the Raw Underground. I think I've said this before. It's the Raw Underground set. In fact, I'm covering something up, so it, it probably would, you're probably seeing a picture of the Raw Underground set on your screen right now. That's MVP. He goes, well, ladies and gentlemen, the Hurt Business, it's been booming, uh, but it also is bad to be booming even much more because, you know, the colossal Vance and Reed, he went to team up with Ricochet again. And they lost last week, Bobby Almighty. Hey, yeah, tough luck, you know. But hey, I'm not here to rub it in. I'm not here to tell Bronson Reed how what to do with his career. Tell him to be better off in the hurt business. I'm just going to imply it by watching the almighty Bobby Lashley, primetime Ronnie Hughes, do their work, do their thing in that ring. And, ladies and gentlemen, as I promised to you last week, now shut your dumb asses up and welcome in the newest member of the Hurt Business. And in walks a gentleman in a suit. And he stands next to MVP. And he goes, this right here, this is Damon Kemp. A premier amateur professional wrestler. A man who brings the pain. Wrestling's in his blood. You know. And... While some people may have overlooked this man for the sake of 
other members of his family. Let, let it be rest assured that this man, Damon Kempf, is the true lethal weapon of that bloodline. This man, Damon Kemp, is the true lethal weapon in NXT, and he's soon to be the lethal weapon of the Hurt Business. Because coming up next week, Damon Kemp is going to make his SmackDown debut. And business will once again be booming. So yeah, I, I just felt <clears throat> that Damon Kemp, you know, fit the Hurt Business. Because like, I mean, he's fine, I guess, as a promo. But I feel like he would benefit from having a manager. And, like, he's been doing the heel thing on NXT in real life. So, I'm, like... I mean, my hurt is I like more tweeners. But, <laughs> but yeah. Like, the, just that vicious side of him, I guess. I'm implying there. And, yeah, he's now here. He's in the hurt. I thought he fit. And I know that Bronson Reed and, you know, Ronnie aren't exactly old. I think they're, like, early 30s. But it's nice to have an actual, you know, actual young guy. You know? A guy that could probably stay with MVP for like five years, ten years <laughs> and grow so yeah, Damon Kemp the newest member of the Hurt Business he's making his in-ring debut next week and he's probably got a gold, gold and black singlet and that would kind of go hard and yeah, this is the new Hurt Business and the Cyclone can go off and do their own thing because I just decided randomly one day I kind of want the Cyclone back, because I really like that team. And, yeah. So, Bronson Reed's replacement in the Hurt Business is Damon Kemp. 74. <laughs> Tam has a gimmick that's getting stale, apparently. Just Tam. But, defense number four of the Women's Tag Team Championships is made. When Mackie and Tam, you could really say the two aces of the group, beat Gigi and JC. Um, Tam pins Gigi with a spin kick to make defense number four of the women's tag team titles. 71 for Tam, 79 for Mackie, 58 for JC Jane, 68 for Gigi Dolan. And yeah, the J Flow run continues as they head into Survivor Series kickoff, where they'll face Toxic Attraction, Diona Perrazzo, and Chelsea Green. We then see Hand is in catering, and she's sort of like eating her food. When Ham, Otis, and Fallon come in. And they're like, you know, how did it all go? And she's like, huh? She's like, you know, how was it? And then Happy looks down, and she's like, oh, the food, it was great, yeah. She's like, no, silly, you know, Morgan date with Otis last week. And Ham's like, yeah, it's weird, I haven't, I haven't heard from my friend, I haven't heard from friend since, since last week. Fallon's like, you haven't heard from her? That's odd. I thought like you two were like best friends. She's like, we are. And oh, all right, okay, okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just like, I tried to check up. Uh, but if she's not been here, then I guess that is odd. And Ruby goes, well, you know, she walks in, a new leather jacket, you know, after she beat up Naomi last week. She goes, maybe Morgan just got tired of being, having this anchor around her ankle. You know, who wants to be friends with this? You know grown woman sitting around here carrying a stuffed pig just eating food and just being Egh. and Ham stands up she's like what did you say to me she's like no 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 I've got an issue with you I'm just saying you know things in the Smackdown women's division they're here to change and whether that be you or Miss Cowgirl over here or your disappearing vanishing friend what matters is that the destination where we're going that is really the unknown. Because it's not going to be you or Kyrie or Bailey or any of these other people at the helm. It's going to be Ruby goddamn Riot. And Ham's like, well, fight me later on tonight then, bitch. And Ruby goes, well, oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> we then get Kayla with DIY. And Kayla goes, well, you know, last week you defended against La French Connection. Here on SmackDown, what's next for you two? And Johnny goes, first of all, you know, Candice last week, she stepped up to damage control. And they took her out. But she's not injured or anything, she's just taking a week off, but she'll be back next week. And, you know, she's ready to kick some ass. 
But as for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, we said it last week. Keith Lee and Braun Breaker, we had that little interaction before they had their match, and they ended up being victorious. Now, we are, you know, fighting champions. We want to fight the best tag teams we possibly can here. It turns out, Kayla, that is apparently the Limit Breakers. So, Keith, Brawny, how about it? Two weeks' time. DIY Limit Breakers 2. This time for the SmackDown... No, it was for the tag titles last time. But once again for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, this time there will be a winner. What do you say? A 81. I expected better. But despite these two having the psychology to call in ring, they don't have enough psychology to do anything of anything with it. So... Apparently 15 minutes was too long despite me scripting a match between two people with over 70 psychology. Anyway, Carmelo Hayes rolls up Big E and beats him. Yet another former world champion to add to his hit list. I think he's at 7 now. Edge, Keith, Oni, Seth, Ziggler, Corbin, Kofi. No, he's at 8. So yeah, he's at eight former world champions defeated under the, un, as his run on the main roster. And he keeps a hold of that Mind the Bank briefcase until, you know, whenever he goddamn pleases, whenever he wants to cash that thing in, he's more than proven that he's a top guy here on WWE. So what's next? Where's the sky's the limit for Melo? He's stolen a victory over Keith Lee here. Not Keith Lee, Big E. Um, I imagine Trick Williams or whatever, like shenanigans led to the roll-up. And yeah, not clean, because you are protecting Big E, because he was the world champion like two months ago, so. <laughs> we then get a quick segment of Ezekiel. He's prepping up. the. F we don't see any of the other family members on camera this time, but he's doing the final bet to prep work for the Samson Shack showdown, which will be the cinematic match between his family and the House of Black at Survivor Series tomorrow. He's sort of like... I guess hiding like weapons around that he only he'll know where they are so he can use it to his advantage like I guess boarding up the walls so nothing gets broken shit like that you know hiding putting away Ernie's favourite painting so it doesn't get torn up <laughs> just a funny segment of Ezekiel getting the Samson check ready for war tomorrow night we then get a sit down interview Pat McAfee says, my guest at this time, you know, the three, you know, masked attackers who have caused riot here on SmackDown since their arrival, and the three men who will align with Seth Rollins in war games tomorrow night in their in-ring debuts here in WWE. It's Buster Gates, Nebo Barnes, and Rufus Hamill. And Pat McAfee goes, first and foremost, well, why are you here? And obviously it's Buster who does all the talking here. And he goes, isn't it obvious, McAfee, why we're here? Let me ask you a question, Pat. Why weren't we here? Okay. We have had many a superstar come here to WWE on the main roster of Raw, SmackDown, NXT. We've had, you know, these weird anime dudes. We've had French guys. We've had rappers. We've had all these other stupid people who get spots on this television show, but three of the best in the goddamn business get overlooked time and time again. Make no bones about it. Look at me. Look at Rufus. We're everything this company looks for in its guys. And Nebo, he may not have the usual WWE superstar look but let me tell you he what he makes up for you don't want to underestimate him because he's gonna kick ass like nobody else can there's nobody on this roster that can hand ass quite like Nebo but yet there we were sitting around this guy gets called up she gets called up he gets called up nothing nothing at all and that's when we decided that we had to sit back and take action. If we aren't going to be called upon. And 
we were just going to sit around having our talents wasted, then what's the point of even trying? Why don't we just quit? No, we had to make a statement for ourselves. And LA Knight, you know, a guy like that is the sort of guy I look up to. Because he don't take no shit. He says what he says what's on his mind. He, he backs up in that ring. And Warden, that champ, that United States champion, of course, that was an easy target for us to make our first statement. Because we immediately decided we were gunning for that belt. But then our plans changed. Because we got a phone call from Seth Rollins. And Seth was like, hey, I, I, I saw your free attack with LA Knight and Warden. And I, I, I got flashbacks, you know. To ten years ago when me, Roman and Marx, we did that same thing. And do you know how that made me feel, McAfee? That the one of the greatest of this entire generation on our first night after being wasted for so long told us that we reminded him of himself. That's when I knew this is we were doing the right thing here. And Seth he needed numbers. Seth needed allies in war. And while we may not be with him, and once War Games is over, we're going to go our separate ways and dominate SmackDown until we butt heads again for the WWE Championship somewhere down the line. But tomorrow night, we're all as one. Because, quite frankly, the bloodline stranglehold on this company is exactly what they want. They want Roman Reigns at the top. They've wanted Roman Reigns at the top for seven goddamn years. But because we weren't Roman Reigns, we never got the opportunity. Because we're not their prototypical superstar, like a factory-made star, like a Bram Breaker. We're not that veteran that fights their way to WWE like AJ Styles. We're not that group that immediately captures the hearts of the WWE Universe like the New Day. We were just three indie schmucks in NXT. Well, I want you to look at this. Look at me. I'm actually like, looks directly into the camera at this point. And he goes, enough. Forget about all those names I just said. Forget the bloodline. Forget AJ Styles. Forget the New Day. And remember this. Remember the name of Absolute Buster Gates. Of Nebo Barnes. Of Rufus Hamilton. Because we are taking over. We are the revolution that this company so desperately needs. And that revolution right here on Fox is televised. Eh, this actually did alright, you know. <laughs> um, the notes make this look weird, so I'll explain what happens. Um, Ruby and Ham's are going at it. Um, Ruby's healing, you know, she only turned last week. And Ham's is about to get the win. She probably takes her down with like a knee strike or whatever, goes for the porker splash. When on the Titan Tron, we see like a dark room pop up, and Morgan's like sat in the middle on a chair, like hands tied. I can't imagine mouth gagged or whatever. And then the same person from last week just walks in and like rips the gag off. Morgan's in the same clothes that she was in last week. And she's like, Hammy, 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 listen. Run. Run away. We can't win this. It's too late for me, but you can save yourself. And then Ham's is like, well, no, I want to come and save my friend. And then bang, riot kick. One, two, three. Ruby Riot wins. And she picks up another win here as... Her heel turn, I guess, is still in effect. But more importantly, um, drama as Morgan, I guess, is still being held hostage by whoever it was that jumped her in the alley last week. Hmm. We then get a promo. And I imagine, like, I did this on purpose, like, to have this in this spot. Like, LA Knight is watching the end of the, um, the revolution segment. That's that's the faction name, the, the, the revolution in case that wasn't obvious. But he's watching that and he goes, he's like, he's got him, he's got his sunglasses on, and then he takes it off and turns to the camera and he goes, 
Let me talk to you. Boys. You know. Buster, baby. Me and you go back quite a while. And I knew it. I knew from the day I first met you, kid, that you were going to be something special. Here in this business. And I, I believed that. The day you signed for WWE and you went to NXT and you became the NXT Cruiserweight Champion. I went, this guy, he's, that's the first of many, many championships he's going to hold. Then you made one little mistake. Let me, let me correct myself. You made one big mistake. And you know I know what that is? Come here. Let me talk to you. You made that one big mistake. That one big mistake was you made your name at the expense of a megastar like L.A. Knight. You want to make yourself the revolution here in WWE. You don't do that at the expense of L.A. Knight. You don't jump straight for the big dog. Huh? Kid. You got a lot to learn around here. And the second you show your face back up in this building, L.A. Knight, all L.A. Knight's going to put you down. And that's not an insult. That is a fact of life. Yeah. And Cameron Grimes walks in. And he goes, well, 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 L.A. Knight. And he goes, can I help you? And he goes, yeah, let me talk to you. He goes, I see from afar, you know, you're the mega star, you're the LA Knight, you've got all this, this bling bling, you know, you're the kind of guy that Cameron Grimes would like to associate with. So, allow me to extend an olive branch to you. As free of them as one of you, LA Knight, I know you're great, but you're going to get your ass kicked. So how about it? Cameron Grimes has got your back. And he goes, I appreciate that, kid. But I'll let you know if I need you. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb is then with the, um, the Cyclone. I can't believe I forgot their name. And they go, she goes, well, you know, you returned finally. But it didn't quite go to plan last week. You lost to the Limit Breakers. And Ricochet's like, you know, Kayla, a year ago we were a top tag team. We were the Raw Tag Team Champions, you know. But our first match in nearly a year, there's going to be some rust to shake off, you know. So, as much as I would have loved to have won that match, and Bronson would have loved to have won that match, we can't look back on that as, you know, something to be upset about. we got to look forward to the future and our next opportunity, our next match, our next chance to become the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Them here, oh no, 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 no. Bonjour, Ricochet. Je m'appelle David Marteau. Elle s'appelle Violet Marteau. And we have a problem with this. You cannot walk in to Le Bleu brand on your first night and become the Smackdown Tag Team Champions when La French Connection were robbed last week and Ricochet goes well last I saw you know you won you lost pretty fair and square so and he goes don't you insult David Marteau how about you want to prove you are still one of the greatest tag teams here in double W how about next week you face La French Connection in tag team action and Bronson reads out Great, mate. I would love to fucking kick their heads off. Be, be a big time, mate. And yeah, there we go. French Connection against the Cyclone next week. Just a quick segment to set up a match. Nothing more, nothing less. Eh, 84. I expected better. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but I guess I shouldn't because Swerve and Gaza aren't doing that good. But it is the fatal four-way to determine the next challenger for Warden and the US title it is Matt Riddle, Swerve Scott, Cesaro and Angel Garza. And I imagine this, the dynamic is mainly between Riddle and Swerve. You know, they've had their things recently. And I imagine there's reluctant partnerships where Swerve's like, you know, it would be beneficial for us to work together to take out Cesaro or something. And then there's also Swerve and Riddle going at it because Swerve, you know, doesn't want him to be associated with Riddle. And then Swerve would take Riddle down. He get he got up top for the Swerve Stomp when he gets shoved off the top by Robert Roode. And Riddle's like, what the fuck, bro? And then he gets laid out by Adam Cole. And they've tossed Riddle and Swerve to the outside and just beat them up. And the, the Fritz brothers are out there as well. 
which leaves just Cesaro and Garza in the ring. And when those two are in the ring together, you know who's probably going to win. Cesaro apparently submits Garza with a sharpshooter in 18 minutes to become the number one contender for the US title. 91 for Matt Riddle, 73 for Swerve Scott, 86 for Cesaro, and a 76 for Angel Garza. And Cesaro will face Warden at some point in the future for the United States Championship. But we then, from there, we go to like, I imagine we go to an ad once Cesaro wins, and we come back and, you know, the Paragon are standing tall in the ring. As, Who's ready for story time for Adam Cole, baby? Let me tell you this. Why, why, oh why, was Adam Cole, baby, was the glorious Bobby Roode, not a part of this fatal four-way, but those two dummies, those two idiots, Matt Riddle and Swerve, they got to be in this match for the chance to become the United States Champion, but not the Paragon? Why? Pierce, come on. Listen here, buddy. You know, you know we beat their ass last week, so on what world are they on a better run of form than we are? Okay. In fact, no. I'm not going to sit here and take this, Pierce. Come out here and explain yourself to me. Instead of Adam Pierce, he gets Hit Row. And they've got to promo themselves because Swerve just got attacked. And like, you know, Riddle, he's been our new bro recently. Swerve, he's our OG. And you think you can just come out here and take them out and without repercussions? Or Top Dollar and Ashanti the Adonis are here to, you know, get even with you. And Carl's like, oh, you're not Pierce, but, you know, I'm not going to complain about this because, listen here, buddy. Come here. Adam Cole, baby, is going to tell you a little story. And that story is this. It's also a little trivia question, Toby Dollar. It's the great career of the Fritz brothers when they branched their own path away from their family name. That all began in November 2022. And if you remember correctly, um, a pub quiz question, you know, who was that irrelevant tag team that nobody ever cared about that they made their first in-ring debut against and beat in their first match on SmackDown? I'll tell you who it is, Hit Row. It's you two. Get your ass in this ring. <laughs> we then go into um, Hit Row against the Fritz Brothers. A 70? Huh. Okay. Ashanti got 71, what the fuck? But it is the Fritz brothers, of course, who win. Um, Kevin Fritz submits Ashanti the Adonis. Um, is this, you know, Kevin is Marshall, okay. Ashanti gets a 71, 49 for top dollar, 60 for both the Fritz brothers. And yeah, I just had to give him a nice win. Because they are the two that need establishing. We know who Adam Cole is, we know who Bobby Roode is, but we don't know these two need establishing. So yeah, they get the first match. But yeah, again, all of Hit Bro, I guess, left laying by the Paragon this week. <laughs> we then get this segment. J Flo celebrating in their. They're probably just in the hallway, actually, with their titles, because they won. Like, he's going, I won, we won, we won, we won, woo, 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 woo. They will get being happy when they stop celebrating, because they cross paths with damage control. And Bailey goes, Oh, did the little girls keep their titles? Did they keep their toys? Well, <laughs> congrats, girl. Allow me to be the first, as a locker room leader and a role model, to congratulate you on retaining your championships against some quite up tough opposition. You know, Gigi and JC, they're no threat. Or no, they are a threat. They're no slouches. Whatever. <laughs> but, here's the thing. When, and this isn't an if, when, you know, Cora's carrying around that Liberty Championship because she beat that dummy Shotzi, when me and Dakota decide everybody in this, this drill trio here should be holding gold, you better watch your back. Because we've got no problems beating little girls like you. Okay? So keep a hold of that championship. Keep it warm for us. But right now we've got other stuff to do so we're gonna let you keep it for a little while longer and then they walk off and Mackie just sort of they're just glaring at Bailey and then I imagine she flips her off <laughs> which gets a pop from the crowd speaking of pop from the crowd 
But then a um, locker room door that's shut, and then it opens, and Cesaro steps out. Like, he's not in his ringer anymore, he's got changed, he's now in a suit, sunglasses, and he shuts the door behind him. And then he walks forward and bumps into Wardlow, goes face to face with Warden, and he's also in a suit, with a US title over his shoulder. And he goes, so you got my next challenger, huh? And Cesaro goes, guess so. A warden's like, great, I look forward to it. And Sarah goes, I've heard so much about your dominance as this champion. Can't wait to test you myself. That's when only Lorcan, and Drew Gulak and Timothy Thatcher walk in. And Drew Gulak goes, pardon my interruption. We're here to talk to Mr. Cesaro, so if you could get away, you don't exactly fit what we're doing here. A warden's like, what the fuck, bro, what does that mean? And he goes... I don't know if you've noticed, Cesaro, that myself, Mr. Lorcan, and Mr. Thatcher have been doing quite well on Velocity in recent weeks, but there's no reason why that has to be limited to just cruiserweight action, you know? Maybe if you got lean, you, you could be, you could make yourself cruiserweight, but I'm not going to put any money on that. So, you as a catch-as-catch-can technical wizard, you'd be right at home in our little trio. What do you say? And Cesaro goes, Look, I agree, you know. You three are incredible talents, you know. You're doing great stuff on Velocity. I'm, you know, I'm watching every week and you're, 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 you're great. Like, I'm not taking anything away from you, but I'm not interested. I'm doing fine by myself. Thanks, but no thanks. In fact, it's like, what do you mean no? You're saying no to us? Then Oni gets in his face and starts screaming. He goes, you're going to say no to us, huh? Huh? And then Warden sort of steps in as well. And then <laughs> only of the Gulag sort of back off and they go, you know, consider it, you know, consider, consider it. You then cut to the ring. Ding dong, hello. <laughs> Bailey's ding dong, hello. Ladies and gentlemen, please get ready for what could possibly be. And this breaks my heart to say it. The worst episode of Ding Dong Hello in history. Because normally, I get to control my own guests on this show, and I would love to once again talk to the Liberty Champion Cora Jade, or to Anne Marie Porter. But apparently, Pierce says we have to sell the pay per view. So, please welcome my guest. She's a big dumb idiot. And she's going to get embarrassed at Survivor Series. AJ Lee. Out comes AJ. And she goes, huh, I'm, f- I'm flattered by the compliments there, Bailey, you know. But I can't help but feel you're, you're compensating a lot here. You know, this, this whole Ding Dong Hello set. What is it? Like, where, where's the Bailey I know? You know, when I left here for the first time, um, I thought I'd left the women's division in good hands with you, Bailey. Hell, I wore your shirt in what was at that time my final ever wrestling match. I, that's how much I endorsed you. And looking behind you, I see a champion. And that champion, you know, one of many people, three, many, many women that I've called, you know, my wrestling children. You know, the, the, that I'm, I'm molded and I, I'm motivated to become and get involved in this business. And then there's Dakota, who also, you know, I see a lot of myself in when I look at her. But this, I'm not back here to, you know, rain on anybody's parade. I'm just here to, you know, as a, as a vet and as someone that all three of you look up to, tell it how I see it. And Bailey goes, well, I'm quite frankly tired of being told how we see it, because I'm going to tell you how I see it, AJ, okay? You left. You left for five years, you ran from the grind. And yes, I may have looked up to you in the past, I was first breaking in in NXT. Cora may have looked up to you when she first started getting into wrestling, but guess what? We grew up. Huh? You're still living off your 15 minutes of fame? What was it, a decade ago at this point? You know, you had to hang off the lips of John Cena and Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, all these people to make yourself relevant. 
You know how I make my other self relevant, BAJ. I be Bailey. Okay? Ding dong. Well, do you know how I make all the people around me relevant? Because listen here, AJ. Who did you ever help? You claim to be for the gals. You know? You, you ran at Stephanie. You ran at that generation's women. All in the main, you said, was all for the gals and to help women's wrestling in general. What did you really do? All of that, AJ, what that meant was AJ wants to be on top. And the second that new blood, you know, like me, like Charlotte, like Becky, like Sasha, the second all of us started showing you up while we were still in developmental, you ran because you'd have rather have been remembered for being great amongst everybody you were competing with. But once real greatness arrived, you'd have been exposed. And at Survivor Series, AJ, myself, you know, your original protege, I guess, one of your wrestling daughters, and the other three of us, we're going to show you up. And you're going to wish you stayed at home collecting, I don't know, is your husband, did, did he get paid out of his contract? I don't know what's going on there. And then AJ gets ready to fight to win. Outrush the other four, Kyrie, Utami, Oscar, and Shotzi run out from the back and they stand side by side by AJ. And then Amory and Kelsey run out and align with um, damage control. And then they like, whoa, 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 whoa. Not on the set, not on the set. Okay, ding dong, okay. You guys talk a big game. Kelsey and Anne-Marie, they're still in their infancy. If you want to prove that you're better than them, how about two of you face them in a tag team match right now? And I believe it's Shotzi and Kyrie that answer the call. It is, yes, okay. And in a 79, that's actually pretty good. Kyrie carried like fuck. But double trouble win. They cheat to win. Amory pin the shots he feet on the ropes, I guess. And another win for the newly turned duo. And they pin the former Liberty champion and beat, I guess, the current SmackDown Women's champion. 66 for Amory, 57 for Kelsey, 71 for Shotzi, 89 for Kyrie. And yeah, more some last minute heat added to that for Survivor Series tomorrow night. Speaking of, before then we've got next week and just announced following their interaction earlier on tonight it's going to be Warden teaming up with his new number one contender Cesaro. Can they coexist when they take on Oni Lorcan and Drew Gulak? in tag team action. We also heard MVP announcer earlier on tonight that Herp is his newest member, their lethal weapon, Damon Kemp, makes his in-ring debut on the blue brand. He'll also have his first match in a couple of months. Adam Cole Bay Bay, the leader of the Paragon, taking on Matt Riddle. And then more tag team action as the Limit Breakers face off against La French Connection, Idris Inoufi, a Malik Blade. And then I don't know where else to announce this, so we're just gonna do it here. We have the final match for Survivor Series. It's another it's the second actually I don't know if this will be kickoff. I have it penciled in to be kickoff, but you know, I don't know if I want to commit to that. I might move something else with the kickoff show. But it is the niece business. Anthony Nice, Arya Daivari, Sean Daivari, Archer Wakefield, and Dominic Mysterio. Taking on Wesley, Tristan Ellison, and Leslie Young of MSK, as well as Axiom and Nathan Fraser in a cruiserweight spotlight 5v5 tag team bout. 99 rated segment. 
Seth Rollins and Solo Sokoa come out. And he goes, well, here we are again, big dog. 24 hours remain. The final day. You know, it's been 10 years. 10 years since me, you, and Marx put on those stupid turtlenecks. Hell, we nearly came out with riot shields. We left them in the back. We came out in those turtlenecks and we changed the game. Well, Roman, who'd have thought that all these years later, here we are. Survivor Series, The Shield X. My team, your team. In War Games. Now, you know my team. You heard Buster and Nebo and Rufus early on tonight. You know. They got a lot on their shoulder, a lot of chips on their shoulder they need to get this dub. Yeah, of course, you know, my plan B is Solo Sokoa. And you know me, Seth freaking Rollins and Roman Reigns, big dog. We know you too. Because your family is a joke. You're a joke. And it's Survivor Series, this is it. Because when I beat your family once and for all in this ring, Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, you will fall and you will acknowledge the revolutionary, the visionary, the WWE champion, Seth Freak. I'm here. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman, and allow me to introduce to you the team that will be victorious tomorrow night inside War Games, led, flanked by the Samoan werewolf Jacob Fatu. And the greatest tag team of the 21st century, Jimmy and Jay, the Usos, your tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Out comes Roman and the bloodline. And Roman and Seth just stare at each other. Seth, he's got the title over his shoulder. He's not even cracking a smile anymore. He's not laughing. He's like, you know, oh shit, this is some fucking... Some fighting. Maybe you've had to break out. And then Roman just sort of gestures to Heyman to hand in the mic. And he does it. And he goes, Ten years, huh? Ten years since I put my trust in you. Ten years since I left my family behind. Because I thought I'd found two new brothers. Turns out, I only found one, and I found one who will make my life a living hell. Well, guess what, Seth? If that's the game you want to play, I'm down to play. Because you have gathered what a group, you know, Solo, that little rat over there, you know, Jimmy and Jay have shown restraint. They don't want to hit their little baby brother. I do. I want to smack his face in real good, Seth Rollins. You understand me? And as for those other three, where they get off thinking they're us, they got another thing coming. Because there's only one ragtag group of three they get to dominate the main event of Survivor Series in their debut, Seth, and you know who they are. But here lies the real kicker, Seth. What's next for you? What's next for you, Seth Rollins, when you committed... Must be eight years of your life trying to topple me. Ever since you took that chair into my back all eight years ago, the only thing that you live off of is being... 
recognised as better than Roman Reigns. And you've done good. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to yourself, you know. I consider you my greatest rival. For the longest time I couldn't beat you. I beat you back at the rumble. Because I had my bloodline by my side. I didn't have my bloodline a clash at the castle and here you stand with my WWE championship. But Seth, your entire existence lives off the back of my bloodline, me. So what you gonna do, Seth, when when my bloodline go to war? We show you up and then I win. And then shortly after that I'll take my WWE championship back. Then you've wasted all this time, Seth. You can sit back and you can whine and you can cry. I'm never going to be the face of WWE because I don't get those opportunities because I live in the Roman Reigns era. Well, listen here, Seth. you goddamn right you do. If you want to be the top guy, prove it, Seth. Step in a war games. Step toe-to-toe with the tribal chief. Me and you, all gloves are off. We got weapons in war games. You got a steel cage, two rings. Those sound like fighting words to me, Seth. So we'll we'll see. We'll see who truly is the top guy here in WWE. And Seth's like, ha, 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 ha. Oh, Roman, Roman, big dog, big dog, listen here. You know, it's hard, you know. I get lost in the moment. You go on these these rants, these tirades, and even I get lost. I go, ooh, there's the tribal chief. There's the tribal chief doing his thing of his bloodline, you know, acknowledge me. But I look in your eyes, Roman. You're scared of me. I see that same look in your eyes that I saw before Clash at the Castle. Fear. Because you don't know what's in store for you the same way you didn't know what was in store for you heading into Cardiff. And you think, because you've got this last mystery opponent, this mystery partner for your team. I don't think you know who it is. I think you're bluffing me, Roman Reigns. I think you're trying to get in my head. You're not confident. You're scared. Because ten years on from the uh, the very show that we made our debut together, one of us is gonna win, and one of us is gonna lose. Roman Reigns and nobody remembers second place because I've been second place to you for fucking five goddamn years. You wouldn't say fucking. Because <laughs> nobody remembers second place, and I've been second place for you for like seven years, Roman. And I've had enough. Because time for talking is over. And then out from the crowd, Rufus, Nebo, and Buster jump from the ba- over the barricade and like surround the ring. And I say, why wait for war games? Why don't we sell this right now? Roman drops the boat, Seth drops the boat on the mic, and he like sort of takes the suit jacket off, and of course Roman's ready for a fight. And that's when all of the entire locker room come out. And Pierce, like, all is able to, like, go, no, no fighting, no fighting, no fighting. And we then, the show ends. I imagine just the visual is, you know, the bloodline, the revolution, and Solo are, like, just outside the ring, being held off by members of the roster. And then there's also a bunch of them in the ring holding Seth and Roman apart, who aren't even trying to fight. They're just, like, mouthing shit at each other, like Smack Talk, off mic. As we end the show. For an 86. We will take that. And we will then move on to. A very quick episode of Velocity. We kick off the very quick Velocity. With a. The third. Opening round match of the Trio Championship Tournament. Um, It is the undisputed trio. Of Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong. Who defeat the Lady Killers. Of Zachary Benchahar, Gregor Ferguson, and Lennox Duncan. Bobby Pish fit. <coughs> Bobby Pish? <laughs> yeah. Bobby Fish. 
Where's the lie? Pins Gregor Ferguson with a moonsault. 34 for Lennox, 59 for Gregor, 70 for Zachary, 82 for Roddy, 62 for Fish, and 89 for Kyle O'Reilly. So this group probably could be considered favourites to win, I guess. Them or the, um, the Thatcher Trio, I guess. Because the Thatcher Trio did win, I believe, did they beat... Who did they beat? Because I know, um, I'm pretty sure it was Legado who beat the Pirates. So they would have beaten, oh, the Regal Coalition, yeah. Because the main event tonight is MSK versus the Nice Business, yeah. So yeah, so it'll be Undisputed versus the winner of MSK or the Nice Business, I think in two weeks' time. And next week will be the first semi-final between the Thatcher Group and Legado. First though, Thatcher himself gets a win over Sereggi. They don't click, but 68 I guess is fine. 75 for Thatcher, 41 for Sir Reginald, and yeah, just a quick win for Timothy. We then get a tag team win here for Axiom and Nathan Fraser because they're on the Survivor Series team, and I want to give them a nice win. So they be a thrown together tandem of Ikem and Jiro and Evan Bourne when Axiom beats Ikem and Jiro. 38 for Jiro, 67 for Bourne, 63 for Nathan Fraser, and a 54 for Axiom. And then the main event, which serves as both a Survivor Series preview and the first round match of the Trio Championship Tournament. It is Wesley on his way to becoming a double champion, I guess, with his MSK stablemates Leslie Young and Tristan Ellison against the Nice Businesses and any Nice and Daivari brothers. And it is MSK who win. Wesley pins Daivari. Aria Daivari, that is. 60 for Leslie, 58 for Tristan, 70 for Wesley, 55 for both Daivaris, and of course leading the pack with a 79 is Mr. Anthony Nice. But yes, tomorrow night on the kickoff show, I believe, it will be this, but Dominic and Archer Wakefield, um, Lucky Ali, I believe I said that last week, will be against these three, Axiom and Nathan Fraser. And that is the end of a very quick philosophy that gets us a 74... But what matters more than that, of course, is what you thought of the show. Again, mainly SmackDown, but if you want to say Velocity was good, you can. And I'll see you next time for 312, which will be Survivor Series time. Finally. See you then.